All right, welcome back to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. If you need a roof, make sure you call Ireland Contracting. They're the best in the business, and they not only do roofing, they do siding, gutters, windows, anything you need. Give them a call, 1-800-NEW-ROOF. It's easy to remember. Give us a call right now on the Bordis and Bordis hotline, 412-575-2600. We have a couple lines open. We're talking about the Penguins. Also, the Battle in Buccos. Rained out today. That game will be made up as part of a split double header on May 27th. That's Memorial Day. Game one is at one. Game two is at seven o'clock. Um, Trevor Williams gets pushed back until tomorrow, and that means that Joe Musgrove, who was supposed to start tomorrow, will now start on Thursday. So they'll keep the rotation somewhat the same the next couple of days. It'll go Williams, and then Chris Archer will pitch the home opener on Monday. Then Jamison Tyon will pitch the next game at PNC Park, which is. Wednesday. Getting back to the Penguins. Good news for the Penguins. Looks like Evgeny Malkin is going to be back in the game pretty soon. He's not going to play tomorrow against Carolina, but he could play in these last three games. But it sounded like from that interview today that he wants to play in one or two games. So I would imagine the one or two games at the, the, final, the, the last final games of the season. Yeah, that's what I took away from it, but I, that's what he wants. Yeah. Is that what Mike Sullivan wants? And, I think and do you need him to play? No. That, that's I that's kind of I mean, what I'm getting at. I, I wouldn't bother. If I'm Mike Sullivan, I'm saying if they get in a situation where they absolutely need Evgeny Malkin, then fine. I mean, then you can do it. But other than that, why, are, why, why bother? You don't need Evgeny Malkin to beat the Red Wings or the Rangers. I think the only thing there is a discussion with Evgeny Malkin and Mike Sullivan. Like, did they feel a need if Sullivan feels a need based on talking to Malkin like he has to get that like if it's really important to him then you play him but I try to avoid it honestly if I don't need if I don't need him to be out there in a game that may we may maybe don't have to win I don't do it yeah especially if they win tomorrow Jason I don't know I'd be yeah. surprised if Sit if out. you see Tino, take if your you time, see him man. yeah because you, you want him to be back and healthy and 100 percent the first round of the playoffs and Yep. Um, that's ideally what you want, but uh, you know, uh, the one guy I think you want back, and who knows, is Chris Letang. Yeah. I mean, I, no one seems to know what's going on with him. If it has anything to do with the same injury uh, that he missed, what, 11 games with, Something and then like he comes that. back, yep. and now it's an upper body injury, and he's barely skating before practice now. So yep. something's wrong, and that's the that's the one that I'm worried about. Yeah, as you should be. And I know I spend a lot of my time telling fans to like you know get off the ledge it's not that bad you shouldn't worry and uh, this is one that uh, you're now you're on the ledge legit. I'm <laughs> not on the ledge but I mean it's yeah. it's a legitimate concern at this point the playoffs are not far away and Chris Letang is not doing all that much in workouts and he was back for three games and then all of a sudden out of nowhere I mean nobody saw anything in that Dallas game and all of a sudden we show up in New York and he's not available and he's not playing and he's not skating and you know, it was the same thing after the stadium series game when he got hurt. As a reporter, you're asking people, is this his neck? Is this his neck? And I didn't get anybody to tell me, no, it's not. You know, it's, it, they won't tell you what it is, but a lot of times people, when you're asking about injuries, they will tell you what it's not. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, so it, it's not a concussion. Right. Did you get that? I mean, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Because we, we, that's yeah. some people speculate is. No, yeah. don't, don't speculate with that because the Penguins do do a terrific job about differentiating concussion versus upper body injuries. They okay. will tell you it's a concussion, and they've been 100% since I've been on the beat doing this stuff. But. Um, you know, you watch him skate, and he doesn't, he's not doing a whole lot. You know, I was there the other day watching Evgeny Malkin and Chad Ruedel skate. Chris Letang's just kind of yeah. around. And he skated earlier, but he is very clearly behind those guys who were, you know, week, week to week, longer term type. Uh, that was their timeline. And Chris Letang is not doing a whole lot. Is he going to jump back into hockey related activities soon? It sure doesn't look like it. I mean, if I showed up tomorrow and he was skating, I don't think I'd be stunned based yeah. on the lack of information that happens in the NHL. But again, what we've seen until this point ain't great. He's day to day, and there's other yeah, guys that we aren't can we all? like you said. So, <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Let's go to Tim on McKeesport. How you doing, Tim? Good. How you doing? You know, I, I think it's funny that people are talking about, oh, gee, they might not get home ice advantage. But, you know, this is the same nucleus that won the back-to-back -back Stanley Cups. They know how to react to the playoffs. There's no Tavares. Yeah, they got youth and speed at the island, you know. But this is when the playoffs start; it's a whole different ball game. I'm more scared of Oli Mata being back than Chris Letang coming back, <laughs> uh, you know. Uh, um, well, I'll let I'll let you answer that question. That's I mean, fine. Oli Mata's back, and um, yeah, I mean it, it's it's better than what you have. You you would think. Well, I mean, 
I don't, I don't share Tim's opinion on Olimata being back and that being a problem. I think Olimata has been perfectly fine. He was good the other night. I worry a little bit about Brian Doolin on the right side long term, but I think people are unnecessarily critical of Olimata. I mean, he is not Bobby Orr, but he's also not Douglas Murray. I mean, there's a difference in there. Um, to Tim's earlier point, though, I, I do hear what he's saying about home ice isn't that important. There is sort of a, a way of going about your, your life in the playoffs and knowing what that grind is like in the playoffs. And the Penguins have that grasp, I think, better than a lot of teams that could make the playoffs. Like, if you look at Carolina, if you, um, you know, even Columbus to a degree, these teams that have not had a ton of success in the postseason, the Penguins, you should have confidence that they, they'll, they'll be okay. Yeah, you talked about Game 7 on the island and possibly Game 7 in Washington. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I've been to some really loud games in Washington like you have, and yep. um, that game take them out of it uh, early on, and then just just like, super quiet. I think, I don't know what the exact percentage is, but isn't it almost 50-50 in Game yeah, 7 it's, in the it's, NHL? it's not a legit advantage at yeah. all. So, like, I can, I can see how people say, oh, that's overblown. They don't need that. Because, I mean, come on, the Penguins won – in, in, won Stanley Cups in other people's buildings every single time yeah. they've done it. Like, don't don't sit here and tell me that it's essential. But are, are you giving me the option of maybe going for home ice versus, like, resting guys and, and not really caring? Well, I'm, I'm going to go for go it. Go for home That's ice. That's my point. But I kind of like starting on the road because then you feel like if you can steal one, you, you're, you're in the driver's seat early on in this yeah. seat. Series. That's I what, what I like. But, That's, it's like a but, preference. With, yeah. You know, do you go first or second in a shootout or something like that? You know. I, you know, and I, and, and um, uh, see, that's why I don't think third is a big deal. But you know, I, I, you want to go for second. Let's go out to Walton Jefferson. What's up, Walt? How you doing? How you doing, Rich? Thanks for calling. Um, you there, Rich? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Both of okay. us are here. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I, I don't know what's going on with the Penguin power play at home. Okay. Um, Kessel's not scoring. Um, uh, Hornquist is not scoring. And then they go and they put the second power play unit at. And I'd really like to see Sullivan give uh, Jarrett McCann some time on the second power play because obviously he can score. And I would just like to hear your thoughts on that. Well, they're going to get Malkin back here when the playoffs start, and he's going to be on that power play. Uh, the one thing, a lot of people get down on Phil Kessel, but when you look at his stats the last 10 games, he leads the team in points. So I don't think Phil Kessel is the problem. Yeah, he has opportunities on the power play, and he should be more successful putting the puck in the net in the power play. But I don't necessarily think Phil Kessel is the problem. I look at Phil Kessel, and I don't see a problem on the power play, although he could be better. When I look at Phil Kessel, I think even strength goals. His last one was January 30th. That's amazing. That's bad. Yeah. Patrick Hornquist is before that. I don't know, it was January 5th or something like that. I mean, their power play is... You know, I mean, it, it go. It's it's very up and down. I heard Sidney Crosby say, I think it was today, actually, said our power play has been been pretty consistent the whole year. I visibly did like one of uh, started shaking my head. What do you mean? It's it's been the opposite of consistent this season. It's been really really good, then really really bad. Um, but anyway, if you look at the raw numbers, like they're not that far off percentage wise from what they were last year, which was the best in franchise history. So I, I don't think on the whole the power play has been all that bad. It's just it hasn't been as much of a difference maker as they need it to be sometimes. And to Walt's point about Jared McCann, he's been on the second unit for about the past five games. I can understand the argument. Maybe you want to see him getting some more time, but he has been on the second power play. Yeah, and I'm with you. Very consistent. Uh, they, they've given up the most shorthanded goals in the NHL. Uh, that yeah. just, that, that, that's what bothers me when I look at this power oh, play. So um, I, I think they could be a little bit better on the power play, and they should be. They have two of the best players, in the, three of the best players in the world out there. And if you put Crystal Tang, four of the best players in the world. Yes. All right, we're going to take a break. Back with more of your phone calls, some of your tweets coming up next. Stay right there.